Hello everybody. Good morning. I hope that everybody is doing well. So today I'm going to be speaking of, of something pretty pretty interesting. I hope it doesn't come across as uh, depressing or, or, or morbid, right? Because at the end of the day, my only purpose here is to strengthen, to edify, and to bring hope uh, to the people of God. You know, and if somebody happens to come upon this channel that is not a believer, I hope that something I say triggers you to think a little bit more about uh, your life, about God, and where you stand before Him, right? So, I'm going to be reading, I'm going to be reading on, um, out of Philippians chapter 1, and I'm going to begin in, in our verse 12. And I'm going to read a little bit, and then I'll break it down a little bit on, on what, what my uh, teaching today or what my study is about or what I'm trying to convey to you, right? So beginning in verse 12, it says, Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has already served to advance the gospel. As a result, it, it, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains... Most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in my chains. But what is the matter? But what does it matter? The important thing is that every way, in every way, whether from false uh, motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice, he says. <clears throat> yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out to be for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Okay. So let me let me break down. You can go you can go a lot of places with the scripture with what I just read. You can um you can take a lot away from it uh, but what I want to discuss is this suicide suicidal people people that are tired of living people that are tired of this life at some point in our lives I believe that every human being gets to a point where life gets a little bit tiresome. Especially as you look around, especially as you live and you see all the heartbreak, all the um, the dark side of life. We see all the homeless people, all the drug addicts, all the pain, all the death, um, everything that comes along with being human, right? For, for different people, it hits at different times. And it leads, well, it can lead, and that's basically what I'm trying to bring out of this study, to some people, to people that don't know the Lord, this frame of mind, this understanding, once life reveals itself to you in such a way where it's no longer fun anymore, when you've lost a loved one, when you've fallen into a place of financial unstableness you're, you're unstable financially or maybe even broke you come to a place of bankruptcy you lose your job there's no money 
you lose your wife, she leaves you for another man, uh, somebody very, very important to you passes away, an illness befalls you that doesn't allow you to live the life that you used to live and to move comfortably the way that you used to move. These are just some things that come to mind that might trigger people to start thinking suicidal thoughts, right? Start thinking, I no longer want to live. I no longer want to be here. I no longer enjoy life. <clears throat> I no longer enjoy living. A lot of people, this hits them very young, at a very young age, if they experienced these uh, traumatic events that I just spoke about at a very young age, or if they just come from a, a household where it's very abusive, where there's a lot of violence, where there is no love, where there's no nurture, where Jesus Christ is not the center of the home. And so they start at a very young age thinking suicidally. Sadly, very sadly, um, one of my brother's friends, I remember the kid committed suicide when he was, man, about 12, around 11, 12, 13. And I remember at that age, at that time, I was maybe like 15. My brother was around that age as his friend. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't uh, understand how a kid that young could already hate his life so much that he would want to die. Fast forward a little bit. As life goes on, I've lost other friends to, to suicide. And I've known of other people that weren't friends, just people that I knew of, that have chosen to uh, end their own lives. They are no longer, they are no longer happy in this life and so they decide to leave now here's where i want to introduce the gospel here's where i want to bring in christianity to the topic of suicide it's not going to be whether people who commit suicide go to heaven or not i don't like to comment on those things because in all reality i don't think there's sufficient scriptures to to lead us to one conclusion or another so basically it would be more to for me uh, opinions my opinion right so I, I don't think I could extract enough information from the Bible to come to a conclusive um, answer right as to what happens to people I have my own opinions you know so I can give you my own opinions right but I don't want to go there in this video I let the people that have left this earth they're in God's hands Bible says judge nothing before it's time right only God knows the hearts of man and only God can make those type of judgments but what I do want to say is this Christians also Christians also have suicidal thoughts Christians also get tired of living life Christians more so when the light of Jesus Christ enters our hearts when the love of Jesus Christ enters our hearts, there's a burden that comes with that. Because now we're hypersensitive to all the madness in this world. We're hypersensitive to all the darkness. It affects us even more. Because the more you are able to love humans, the more that you are able to be compassionate through the love of Jesus Christ, the more you feel. See, sometimes when you're in the world, you can numb yourself. You can drink, you can do drugs, you can escape it. You can just harden your heart. But when we are called to love, we open ourselves to so much more pain because we love. And that's just the burden of being a Christian. That's why the Bible says that Jesus Christ was a man of many sorrows. He loved deeply. He felt deeply. And so the more like Christ we become, the more we don't feel at home uh, in this earth and the more we long to depart, which are suicidal thoughts, the more we want to leave, the more we, well, we want to die, right? But with our way of thinking, with Jesus Christ in our hearts, we come at it from the perspective of the Apostle Paul, verse 22. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. 
I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, right? And right before that, he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Watch this. He just said something that most Christians would never say. That Christians are not able to say. He says, I desire to die. I desire to depart and be with Christ. Most Christians now, if you would ask them, they would say, well, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord, but I'm not ready to leave yet. And they would give you a bunch of reasons why they're not ready to leave yet. The Apostle Paul was ready to leave. And the only reason he was torn between life and death had nothing to do with, with worldly pleasures. It had nothing to do with financial gains on this earth or just goals that he needed to reach. Or, or you get what I'm trying to say? It had to do, the only reason he was torn is because he said it's more beneficial for me to stay for your benefit, for the benefit of the brothers in Christ, for the benefit of the church. He never said, I want to stick around because I want to, you know, make a little bit more money and, 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 and just achieve those things that I wanted to achieve in this life. Like most Christians now would say, well, I just want to see my children grow up. But then you have grandchildren and you want to see your grandchildren grow up. And then you want to um, send your kids to college and you want to build that house you've always wanted, that dream house. And you want to retire someday and uh, take those vacations that you wanted to take and see that right there is a mentality of, and, and I include myself to some degree there too, so I'm not judging anybody. We are still carnally minded. We are still focused on this life. The Apostle Paul had it right. The Apostle Paul was so much more advanced than us. He understood that whatever you are looking forward to in this life that makes you want to stick around, heaven sur surpasses that so much more. And so we should long to be there so much more. And the reason that we don't long to be there so much more is because whether we admit it or not, there's still some unbelief in our hearts that the Lord needs to remove. Because when complete unbelief leaves us, we want to leave this earth. And we want to be there. We want to be with Christ. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's an understanding that comes with, with deep, deep maturity in the Lord. And I can only hope that someday I attain that. And that is the goal. That's what I'm pressing forward to and that's what I'm pushing towards. But I have to admit I'm still carnal in a lot of areas. And I still long to stick around on this earth for certain things. But this is right here. This is suicidal Christians. These are Christians who are longing to leave. These are Christians who are no longer tied to this earth. They no longer want to be on this earth. They no longer have any attachments to anything on this earth except for the benefit of the church. Except to benefit their children in a Christ-like manner. To strengthen up their children in the Lord. To strengthen up brothers in the church. To be an asset for the kingdom to be a, a, a um, soldier for Christ on this earth. That is the only reason why he is torn. Other than that, he would say, I'm ready to go because that is far better. How do we reach this place? How do we get to this place? And how do we escape? How do we escape allowing the pain and the sorrow and the darkness of this world to lead us to bitterness, to lead us to depression, to lead us to sadness. How do we go this route to where all of that now becomes a very hopeful thing? Because it pushes us, it propels us to want to go be with Jesus, to want to go be with Christ. How do we do that? Let me tell you how. Let's go to Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, and I'll begin uh, in the beginning. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Understand this. This is how you escape 
This is how you do not allow certain thoughts to lead you to sadness, to lead you to depression. You understand that you already died. You understand that your life is Christ. That's what it just said. It said, when him who is your life appears. See, when Jesus Christ is your life, when Jesus Christ becomes your life, when everything about your life is about Jesus Christ, then your mind will always be set on things above, on things in heaven. You're living this life for another life, for another kingdom. So the things in this life will not affect you in a negative way because you're not thinking on earthly things. Now your mind is set on things above. We need to learn to set our minds on things above, brothers and sisters. We need to. I'm not saying it's an easy thing. It's hard. It's hard. But until we start thinking along those lines, along when, when we're able to truly say and mean it, that to live is Christ and to die is gain, when we are able to say, look, man, I'd much rather leave this earth and be with the Lord Jesus and mean it. Don't lie to yourself, man. Don't lie to yourself. You know where you're at. I know where I'm at. I can't say that 100%. I'm being honest, but I want to. When you can say that Jesus Christ is your life and you truly are focused on things above, that's maturity in the Lord. That's a level of Christianity that I guarantee you a very small percentage of Christians are living. Most of them are still very tied and very attached to the things of this world. I just want to encourage you. Let that sadness, let those suicidal thoughts, let those uh, um, let, 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 let that uh, negativity that you see around you push you towards a closer relationship with Jesus. Push you to a longing for heaven, a longing to depart this earth, but only to be with Jesus Christ. Not to depart this earth in a hopeless way without knowing the Lord Jesus. Not to depart this earth just to escape the pain. And period, you just escape. You just, but allow it to lead you to a place where not only do you escape this earth, but you have a destination, a beautiful destination, a peaceful destination. Because a lot of people are leaving this earth thinking that they're just going to end it all. And they're going to awaken someday and, 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 and face God and be uh, face to face with the Lord. And it's going to be a very sad thing if they left without having the Lord in their hearts. So I hope this encourages you. I hope this blesses you. Um, that's my only purpose in these videos. In Jesus' name, amen.